Welcome back to the channel where we build a video game from scratch using Love 2D and Lua. Now, yesterday we ended up getting our particle systems working for our spell cast. Um, now, at the moment, we only have one flame getting the particle system. So, what that might look like is. <laughs> if I don't obliterate my setup before we get started here. So we're going to go into our scene, and we can turn our flame count to one, and this is going to be the only flame that gets a particle system. So see how the particles are following the flame, yet if we move, the particles remain where they were, and they fade as they were, um, which gives it an, a really cool effect, I think. Now we might, we might speed up the fading for it, because I think they linger just a bit much. But today we're going to be working on getting particles for our other flames. So if we have five flames, we want all of them to be emitting particles. Um, but I think one thing we want to do is, like, let's say that this is 200 particles or, or 20 particles, whatever it is. Um, we want to split that amount of particles for however many flames we have. So we might not... We, we probably won't put the same exact particle emitter on each flame spellcast entity, but we might um, we might set we might set the appropriate um, particle emitter based on a flame count. So I think that makes sense because we don't want six times the amount of particles that this is. Once we have six of us, six of them rotating, we don't want the screen to be too too cluttered. So we'll probably um, we'll probably decrease the time it takes for those particles to um, dissipate, so they'll dissipate faster. And then we also want to. And what's weird is like, if you look at like as soon as we instantiate a fire, there's like one random pixel that is that is spawned instead of the particle emitter location. Like, see, look, we had one way over there on the right. So we might want to try to see if we can track that down. And maybe we do that before we add particle systems for the rest of our flames. But, um, I don't know how to even track that down. Yeah, cause see that, that, that appeared like right in the middle. Now, it's not always in the same spot, either. I think it is just a, a random thing with the particle emitter, maybe. I don't know. Let's just speed up, speed up the time it takes them to die. And then another thing we want to do with the game is to start refactoring a lot of this logic into... Um, into where it's going to be more long-term, because... I don't know if we want to use this flame idle state for rendering our flame spell casts because it is very plain. Like all we're doing, I think if I go here, yeah, that's really cool. So what I did just did there is like I hovered over our flame idle um, state and I type in GD for go to definition and it, and it actually pulls up that file right here. So all it's really doing is changing its animation and then rendering the um, the entity at the current frame. So I, I don't think this state is necessarily necessary. So I think what we might do instead of this is make a flame spell cast class and populate that class with all of our spell cast entities. And then in that class, we'd go ahead and render each spell cast entity at its location at current frame. Um, I think that makes more sense, and then that way we can kind of keep track a little bit better of all of our entities. Now we do have us, we have a spellcast entities table, which we are keeping track of. Um, and I guess if that table is only ever populated with, with whatever current spellcast entity, then um, we can go ahead and update and render all those entities, and it could handle 
a fire or an ice uh, once we get to that point. But let's go ahead and go find our particle system emitter here. Now, maybe 500 is too much. Maybe we say there's no more than 400. I think even that's too high, but we'll... Where is our particle system? Okay, so here is how fast they fade. It's taking six seconds for them to fade. So I think we want this to be closer to four. And then that random emission area or like that random spot that one pixel was going towards, I don't know how to debug, but like see that one, it spawned right in the middle of the tree there. I don't know how to prevent that. But it looks like Yeah, I can't really see any consistent pattern about where that stray pixel kind of starts. But let's let's look and see if they dissipate um, fast enough here. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe a tiny bit faster, but I think that's good. So it looks like how many do we emit there? Forty. So instead of us setting the emission rate here to just 40? Oh, you're a madman. <laughs> you're a madman. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Oh no. Oh no. I appreciate, I appreciate the, the try though, dude. Hey Miyagi-Do, good to see you here. So yeah, I think we're going to be doing, instead of setting this emission rate to a hard-coded 40, we're going to ask what our flame count is, and we're going to set our emission rate to whatever the flame count is, uh, whatever our default emission rate is, which is 40, divided by our flame count. So if there's one, our one gets all 40. If there's two, both get 20. And then, um, so Miyagi-Do, I, I applied for this apprenticeship program I told you about a while back, right? Like 14 months ago or whatever. And they got back to me about uh, on Friday and they said hey like there's this coding boot camp that we will cover the um, course fees for if if you're interested but like this was to all the applicants and I have no idea how many applicants there are so I, I got back to them and applied for the boot camp so I'm waiting to hear back from them if I got actually accepted into the program but that might be a thing in the works here I just got to adjust my green screen for whatever reason is just a little off, so I'll try to manually expose right there. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Here, I'm gonna do a currency for all the homies out there. Currency add 250. You know what? I'm gonna give you guys 300 for the slots, but you gotta you gotta spend all 300 on the slots. If you, want to, if you want me to give you more money in the future. <laughs> so, I'm going to say currency add all 300 and then do slots 300 to go fucking, you know, go wild on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then um, what I'm going to do is also, let me just try to do this here. I'm going to go to Miyagi-Do. I've got to hold on one sec. I'm trying to do something. Okay, here we go, and okay, let's try that. Oh yeah! <laughs> Thanks for the sub, Miyagi Do. I appreciate it.
Okay. So yeah, we need to set this emission rate not based on the... Check out that sub badge you got now. You got a little Jimmy over there. Um, emission rate to 40. So we're going to set this default emission rate up here. So a local variable called emission rate. And it's going to be set to 40. Now, one other thing we're doing wrong at the moment is hard coding in um, only one only one um, particle system. So we need to make we need to make a particle system for each um, entity of our spellcast, and then we can go ahead and put. our appropriate emission rate in there. So I'm going to take a look at our flame count and see is this a local variable? It is a global variable. Okay. So we should be able to just say that for this particle system um, it gets our emission rate gets our emission rate divided by our flame count. Now let's see if that ruins anything. It's, it looks like it's still working. And then... Um, I think I also want to see... We want to be able to populate all our particle systems and update all our particle systems. Um, depending on how many flame counts we have. So... I don't know if this means we have to kind of define them ahead of time as local variables. Um, I don't know what that means because we've got, you know, we've got, we, we want a particle system for up to five uh, flames. Yeah, nice. I love the animated emotes are working now. That's so cool. And then I, I hooked up my bot so that my bot can, can tell them to. Um, oh, that's not it, but but we've got like walking Tashio and the and the magic there, so I think that's cool. So yeah, I don't know I don't know how we go about this because we want each flame to have its own particle system because it needs to be moved on a per entity basis. So we do want um, up to five of these, but it isn't very nice to just. I mean, do we literally just give us five particle systems? Because um, the thing is, these this doesn't take up a lot of memory. It's just like a, it's literally just a variable that's getting a particle system. But we're not we're not actually emitting and keeping track of all of those values just yet. But we would want to go through we can go through our flame count and update only you know well we're, we're we are already doing this for our um, for our circle movement for our spellcast entities but we want to do this for our particle system where we cycle through see look instead of just asking if the spellcast fade is greater than 30 go ahead move our our spellcast um, and this is our particle system one, right? So particle system one is getting updated here. So ideally we want a way to kind of do a for loop through all of these and say, like, for example, flame count one or flame count one, go ahead and modify and update only particle system one because there's only one particle system. But I don't know of a way to do that when the actual variable name is um, separate like like we want to it, it would make sense if we go do like for i gets zero through flame count and then we have an index of which to update so i guess we just need to add all our particle systems into a table and or, or, i think it needs to be a class because we've got to we've got to update each individual particle system so like if we imagine 
Actually, yeah, let's try that. I think we can just put it in a table. It's so like, let's, let's have, um, particle system table is going to get an empty table. Now we need to, we need to go through, once we set our flame count, we need to insert however many, um, of our particle systems are in there. Now I'm going to put particle system one here just to make it clear. And that means we've got to update it uh, for all of this. So we'll we'll go here and we'll say substitute with uh, particle system one. And then we'll make sure that didn't break anything. It broke something. Um, Right here. Okay, and that's the other thing is we need to render all the particle systems that exist, but only if they exist, right? So we have a particle system one through five right now, but we don't want to render all five if there's only one flame. So we need to change our render to be a loop of counting how many particle systems are in our particle system table. And then okay, and then the table dot insert function uh, really just appends things to the table. So um, I, I'm a little torn. I don't know if we. Do we populate this table only upon our flame count assignment? So like we, we are given a flame count that would determine how many, how many particle systems we need in our table. So let's go ahead and try to do a table dot insert and we're inserting into the table of our particle system table. And the value we're inserting is, um, and actually, yeah, so we have to do this different because what we're trying to do is insert the actual particle system. So we want to be able to say, yeah, we want to be able to say particle system, particle system table at index one. That's our first particle system. We would put into, uh, I guess we could just manually assign it. But we want, yeah, we want to do it based on flame count. Okay, so we do want to do something because we want to be able to reference these particle systems by an I number, which means we'd have to insert them into a table so that we can do a for loop and have access to the index of them. Because otherwise, I don't know how to how to only modify like the the number of the variable here. So, let me see. Um, particle systems. If we have a particle systems table that has five values in it, we'd want to add into that value. See, and we need, I think we need to declare this already as a table full of particle systems. So I think what we can do is move this into here. This would change our update and render function, but we, I think we can do something like this. So now our, our P systems table at index one is our first particle system. Um, it looks like the local declaration isn't quite working. Let me see if that will throw us an error in our update. So for our P system one update, yeah, instead of this, 
you know, I want to see, we want to do the same exact thing. We just want to be referencing it, not as the variable, but as the index of a table that has all of our particle systems, because then we can scale it. So we're going to try to do uh, systems, or it's P systems is the table at index one. then we would want to set all this stuff. So actually, let me just yank this. And we'll replace all these P system ones with P system at index one. And we'll see if that, um, we'll see if that crashes. I don't know. Because the because all this is is saying the first index of our P systems table, which is our P system one. And then we're gonna set the emission rate on that particle system. So I think that should work. And then we've got to update that particle system. And then we gotta render that particle system. We'll do it right here. And we're not drawing the particle system one, we're drawing the P systems at index one particle system. Okay, so hopefully that works. Let's make sure we didn't forget an S. P systems, P systems, okay. Uh, we did forget an S here, so. Yep, yep. Scene 11, so that's right up to the declarations here. So yeah, it doesn't like... It doesn't like the local declaration for some reason. And maybe we need to do this differently. Okay. So I think we might need to just do this the other way, which is... Um, We'll, we'll declare these locally outside of our table. And we will make sure we don't have these commas anymore. And then we'll table.insert all of these into the P system. So we'll make a local P system table. And then we're going to go table.insert and we're going to be inserting into our P system table the value of P system one. See, and this is what I was wanting to avoid hard coding in this. Like, I, I don't I don't know if I can pass in multiple arguments to table insert so that I can just insert all our particle systems, but I tried to do the loop where we insert them all by number, and that didn't work. So P system one through five is now getting inserted into our P system, and this is actually an S. So, okay. Scene 38, we're crashing, and it's because... Okay, we don't want this anymore. We don't want that right now. Okay, so I just wanted to see... Okay, cool. So now we are, instead of rendering the variable P system, we're rendering from our particle systems table, the index one, which means if we've got six particle systems, we can go ahead and render them all. So... We would, we would go ahead and initialize every particle system emit um, area and emit rate upon the flame count definition, because if we have, say, three flame counts, for example, we would want each one of those to have their own particle system. Because right now, just the leading fire has it. Which doesn't look all that bad once they're all circling around you, but if you walk you can see that there's only one that's spitting out those particles, and we want 
to have each one get a particle system. So I don't like that we have to do this, but I guess it's okay. We'll, you know, it's all about what we work on getting it to work and then we'll get work on making it pretty. And we haven't been doing much of the, or make it elegant, I guess. We haven't been doing much of that at all. So we're, we're gonna have to take a deep dive here soon into our code base and try to refactor some stuff out into making it more pretty. So so this is great because instead of, instead of copy and pasting all of this for all our particle systems, we can loop through the amount of particle systems we have. We can actually loop through the flame count number we have and update all particle systems for that um, area. And it would give us a matching X position for our spellcast entities table, so that would be perfect. Because we would want our second particle system to be the X position of our second spellcast entity so that each one gets its own location. So I think this is going to work. And we are submitting or we are setting our emission rate to be our emission rate divided by flame count. So if there's 400 with one flame, when we have two flames, it should be 200 each. So we spread out all the particles between all the active particle systems so that there's only ever... Hey, Katronics, good to see you. How did your stream end this morning, by the way? I, I caught the beginning part of it. Yeah, of course. I was, and I've done that before where I've heard someone's audio was echoey and then I tell them and it turns out I had them open on two tabs and I was hearing the echo from there. So part of me was like, oh crap, did I just embarrass myself again? Um, so I'm glad it was messed up. <laughs> okay, so we've got three flames. So. What we want to do is try to only update a flame count amount of particle systems and to only populate them based on if based on our flame count. So gosh, where and we might need to incorporate folding here into our code base so that we don't have to scroll through a bunch of stuff. Okay, so we're updating our spellcast entities by our flame count, but we need to update our particle system based on our flame count. So we'll do that right here. Now, yeah, okay. So we have to update all our particle systems that are active, set our emission rate to zero on, on the particle systems that fall outside of our spellcast fade, which is just our spellcast fade controls the opacity for the um, flames fading in and flating out. Um, so we're, we're setting an emission rate to zero unless it passes a certain threshold of opacity for our actual spell cast. And then I think we would wanna do this. Yeah, we have to do this for every particle system. So instead of just doing this for particle system one, what we're gonna do is do this in a, in a for loop for I gets zero for as many as flame count, do all of this. And we're gonna say, we're gonna say first we check the spellcast fade to see if we need to generate the particle system, but we actually want to start this at one, not zero, and then instead of one here, we can substitute one for I, and then we actually wanna do that same thing here, substitute one for I, and then we wanna do it for the spellcast entities as well. Substitute one for I, but globally there, Okay, 
So now we're updating all of our particle systems, but only only the amount of particle systems that are up to our flame count. So if there's one flame count, it should only render the first one, but if it's three flame count, we should hopefully see three particle uh, systems, one for each instantiation of a spellcast entity, and they should be tracking with that corresponding spellcast entity. So let's see if that's the case. We're not crashing, that's good. Let's see. Okay. I3, I, I did something wrong here. Should have seen what line that was on. 214 in our scene. Oh, right there. <laughs> no wonder I didn't see it, it was off screen. Okay. Okay, we don't, wait, do we? <gasps> No, I don't, I still think only one has it. No, no, it does look like the other flames have it. Let's boost up, let's boost up our um, emission rates because I think when it gets so little and maybe we change our flame count to two and see, maybe that's easier to see. Because we are doing half the amount of particles. No, it doesn't look like it's working. So one works fine, and then five will probably split our emission rate, and then it'll look like hardly any are coming out, but it's only on one flame. So that's like the correct amount for one flame, but we need each flame to have it. And it's just hard to tell because the flame sprite itself has got single pixels that, that kind of look like it's it's that particle system, but it's not. So we we need we need to see what we're doing wrong here. Like we've got table called particle systems that each index has a new particle system and then depending on our flame count we're not here not that yeah depending on our flame count we're going to be setting the emission rate for each particle system then we're updating that particle system for each flame count. So each one should have its own particle system. Now I guess what could not be working with this? Need, we need an index of one, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, the fact that our flame count is one and it's still rendering a particle system tells us that the for loops are like inclusive for one. So even though we don't, we're one index in Lua, if we do a four I gets one comma three, it would do something three times um, instead of like C where it would stop. But, oh, oh we're not, we're not rendering our particle systems. We're only rendering one particle system. So let's pr let's render all of our particle systems and then we'll see if we did it right. So we're gonna do another for loop for I gets one comma flame count. We wanna render all of our particle systems for each flame count. So we're gonna draw not a particle systems one, but a particle systems I. Um, and the particle system itself has the X and Y location, so we shouldn't need to do any of that. So let's see if we give ourselves two flame counts. Yeah, let's see if we give ourselves two flame counts if we're getting particle emitting on both instances. Yes, yes, that's right. That looks right. And we might want to boost it. Well, I don't know, that's kind of a lot of particles. But yeah, if we're if we're casting two fires, yeah, that looks pretty good, honestly. Yeah, I think they need to fade a little faster, and I think I think they need to fade a little faster. Let's go to our P systems 
lifetime, and we'll cut it down to three seconds. And then might want to give it a more violent or a more fast Y so that they float higher or faster. Well, maybe not. No, I think that looks okay. Then they disappear in a reasonable time. Dude, that's awesome. Okay, so let's see. We should have, if we go to a flame count one, we should be able to see... Yeah, we should be able to see um, the same amount of particles, but only emitting from our one flame. Now, it's hard to count how many particles, but it does look like more of them come out with just one. Now, we could change this, but I'm curious if if we give a full five, how that looks with, with the particle emitting being split by five. See, yeah, that, that doesn't look so overpowering. So five looks pretty reasonable and doesn't make, you know, five times the amount as one. Gosh, that looks awesome. That looks so cool. Love how they fade away like that. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, and then even flame count one is looking a little, a little, like a lot, but I think it's fine. You know, it's kind of coming, okay, so here's the thing. The, if you look at the emitters, the emitters are coming out of the top of the flame, which they should be coming out of the base of the flame, because they start off as cyan colored, and then they fade to blue, and then fade to transparent, so we should be starting these emitters out where the cyan colors are originating from. So we should be able to just modify our particle systems um, move to point. Now we're setting our X, that looks fine. And then, okay, what are we doing here? We're moving it to an X of a spellcast entity X minus a virtual width divided by two plus eight. Now that comes from the particle system. Yeah, we had to shift by half the screen because I think the um, the particle system defaults to the center of the screen or something. So we had to shift it by half of the screen to get it to be linked to our spellcast entity X. So if we want it to be a little lower instead of, yeah, why would we be plussing I here? We want to be plussing um, like 13 or something because 16 would be the bottom of our flame. So like if this is our flame, 16 would be at the bottom of our flame. We want it to be in the blue of our flame, which is a little bit higher from the bottom. So 13 is three pixels high higher than the very bottom of our flame. So if we if we put it there, maybe our, our particles will be coming out of the blue part of the flame instead, and it looks like they are. That looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. Now it's actually coming out of the middle of, of that, which is actually a dark blue, so maybe we just shift it over to the left just a teeny bit. Maybe we shift this over by four instead of eight. Now the eight came from half of the tile size, which is 16. So this would be a quarter of the tile size for the X. But now it looks like it's coming out of the bright blue part of the flame, which looks a lot better, I think. Yeah. Okay, so if we go to flame count, and then we go... I want to go to where we instantiate this, which is where... Let's see how two looks. Two flame counts. Okay, nice. Yep, that looks a lot better now that it's coming out of the bright spot. I love that. This is cool. Okay, sweet. Okay, let's try three. Wow, this is awesome, yeah. This is looking cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, the fade is looking good. They're all coming out of each entity, and we're only updating those entities if they're in a certain um, opacity range of our spellcast. So like, you see how our spellcast fades on? 
um, as long as it's past 30 on the alpha layer, it will render and update our particle systems. Now we do need to stop, we need to um, not, so like the particle systems when we scroll off screen are, are not being affected by our, our um, transition. So I think what we might wanna do is we would not render them if we're if we're transitioning but uh, it's a little more complicated than that because we want to we want our so like our 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 scene class in our code has a reference to the current map and if we trigger a transition it has a reference to the next map and then what it does is it it tweens the value of our current map off screen and our next map on screen, but our next map doesn't become our current map until the transition finishes. So I'm trying to think about how we would put our particles, how would we get our particles to stay on the screen instead of move to this next screen? I guess we'd have to attach it to our current scene, which right now we're only attaching it in our scene class. So like, I guess we are we are rendering. Let's see how we're rendering. Um, now we render our current map, and then we render our next map. So we'd have to place our particle systems inside our scene's current map if we wanted them to scroll off screen when we walk off screen. So. That's going to be I'm trying to think if that's really easy or not. Like the thing is we've got our particle systems are local variables. So we don't have access to them in our current map. Um, and then we have to think bigger picture too about like, like w at what point do we get more flames so that we'd have to change our flame count number. And then we have to change our spell cast type depending on what element we're holding. So how does how do we want to frame our game to get access to those variables? Do we want them to be in the scene or do we want them to be in the current map? I don't really know. Or in the play state. I I, I don't really know how to conceptualize where to put all that data. But we do know, yeah, we do know. Let's add this as a note to figure out how to get those particles to render in the, in the current map as opposed to the scene. So we're going to say, just give us a note here saying um, render particle systems in the scene not or in the map. Oh, no, it's, yeah, in the current map. In the current map, not seen. So, I guess we could, yeah, it's hard to determine how how to pass data around. I know Prosto, a follower on the channel, was recommended me to put as many things as I can in local variables, um, but, and that makes it faster for the program, but it doesn't, it, it makes it a little more tricky to pass data through different files. So it might mean we need to add different parameters to our other items so that we can pass in the flame count for the current map as we transition into it. And then if we have the flame count for the current map, we can go ahead and render all of our particle systems for the current map. But right now we don't really have a way we don't have a way to 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 pass in the flame count to our other um, classes. So that's yeah, that's gonna be a tricky one. Cause what we could do, like if if we forget that we even put this in our scene in the first place. Like, what if we didn't put it in our scene? What if we put it in our current map? 
Now, a map... Um, and you know what? A current... We, if we go back here, if we go look at our current map, it is a map instantiation. So we were right into checking out map. So we're not doing much in our map other than getting the collidable object animations, inserting them, um, updating the insert animations function, and then rendering all of our default tiles as well as all of our current tiles if we declared them and then our insert animation objects. So I guess it would make sense to kind of put it in the map instead, but we still we need a way to trigger a different flame count within our game. So it's like maybe you know, maybe when you first learn in, in this game, you have, you're going to have a, um, a, a master that, that kind of walks you through how to cast spells and everything and how this all works. So maybe he's, he's going to say, like, you know, he starts you out as proficiency one, which you can only cast one fire spell. And then some something triggers a proficiency upgrade where you can cast two and then up, uh, all the way up through five fires we have other spells as well but um i guess i'm trying to get to the point of like we need our flame count to be able to be updated and if it's local to our map we'd have to manually yeah i mean i guess we, we can just index into our map and locally and change it there so Part of me wants to try to move our particle system into the map, but it needs to be into the current map. And I guess, yeah, if, if the particle systems are on a per map basis, as soon as we initiate a transition off screen, then a next map gets instantiated and it doesn't get updated until the transition finishes, at which point it'll populate a flame amount of particles for every spellcast entity if it's in the spellcast fade threshold so let's see if we can get and you know what i think i'm going to do a commit before we try to move our particle systems into our map just in case we screw everything up um because i don't want to undo that and fail at undoing it so we're going to go ahead and we're going to just check our get diff and see if there's anything we don't want to be committing here. Yeah, all we do is just loop through our particle system. We update every particle system and then we loop through a particle system and render each one. And then we declare and put into a, a table of particle systems each instantiation. So we should be able to go commit this get commit saying um, article systems for each spellcast entity. Okay, we're going to go commit that. Okay, now we're going to go tear it up. We're going to go into our scene. Now, first thing we're going to do is take our local variables out of our scene. And we want our map to have reference to these because our map is what gets scrolled off screen. So we're going to go declare these up here in our map class. And we only instantiate a new map upon a, a transition of a screen. So it's not like assigning this up here is, is a huge amount of work for the interpreter. And then we're going to go, let's set our flame count to three. Now we need, we need to be able to pass in the flame count into our map instantiation. So it's almost like we've got to set a flame count. And then we need to add to our current map a parameter called flame count or spellcast entity count. Okay. 
And if we pass, um, and actually, this would be the parameter, or this would be that we need to pass in the argument here. So we put in the argument of flame count. So maybe instead of flame count, we call this spellcast entity count. Okay, spellcast entity count. Spellcast one word, I guess. So then we need to go we actually need to change all of our flame counts to be spellcast entity count. So we'll highlight this all. We'll substitute every flame count for spellcast entity spellcast entity count. And then we'll see if we have any flame counts left. Now, okay, so uh, another thing we've got to do, yeah, we gotta move our render, but we also gotta move our spellcast entities. Okay, here's where it gets messy, yeah. Well, yeah, we could, we could, I think we could technically leave this here. Um, but, our spellcast entity is a reference to the self scene. So does that mean we'd have to render our spellcast entities in our map as well? Now we're rendering our spellcast entities here in our map. Let's see what happens to our uh oh. What did it even crash on? 202 on P systems. Okay, yeah. So this is the update. So we wanna we wanna take this all out of here. We wanna put this into our map. Update. Okay, and then the spellcast entity count. It's going to be a self dot spellcast entity count, and this is where we we declare what we do with that flame count or spellcast entity count. We'll call it what it is, which is the spellcast entity count that gets passed in, and we're saving it to a self dot spellcast entity count. We're gonna take that parameter and pop it into a field called self spellcast entity count so we can actually do updating based on that number. So now we're updating on the self dot spellcast entity count. And then this needs to be self dot spellcast entity count. That should all be the same. Now we need the rendering. So we can go ahead and get the rendering for our spellcast, not for our spellcast entities, but for our particle system, which is our spellcast. It's this, but we need to set color to white before we do it. So let's go ahead and try this. It'll be the last thing we render in our map. We're rendering it at the particle system. We're, we're, rendering, we're rendering each particle system of our spellcast entity count. And let's see if that works. Map 51, four must be a number. So let's set this to be equal to spellcast entity count or zero, because I think it might not be updating. Huh. Did it say 
I needed to be a number? Or limit must be a number, yeah. So this spellcast entity count number is not becoming a number. So that means we must not be knitting our initial map correctly. So let's go to our play state and we'll take a look. We, let's see where we instantiate a map which we do a scene view current map. So if we have access to a current map, where does that get assigned? It's just in a global scene view current map. I'm kind of curious why that doesn't crash us. Because do we even have scene view? Yeah, I guess we do have scene view at this point. Okay, so upon the scene init, yeah, I guess I don't know why um, spell cast entity count. If we pass in literally a three here, does it still crash? Yes, map 51. Yeah, and it's just... If we do this for... It's three. We still crash. Why would our spellcast entity count not be a number here? Oh, you know what? I've ran into this problem before where if we give our field the same name as a parameter, it kind of messes up. So what we'll do is we'll just call, we'll call this entities. And we'll see if we can store it in that same variable. And then hopefully we crash on 52 this time. Uh, we don't. <laughs> Shit. Spellcast entities. So it's crashing when this map gets knitted, which is in our scene, and it's when we go right here, we're putting in a number. Okay, I don't know why it's doing this. right now we'll literally just put three here and then we'll make sure we have access to this local spellcast fade uh, but then we gotta update our spellcast fade in our map as well okay yeah dude refactoring is something else refactoring is not the funnest Now we're updating our spellcast fade upon something. If it's a successful cast. So this needs to go in our map update. Okay. Anything else? Map 92 is crashing. This, why is this self spellcast entity count not spellcast? Oh my god. I do this all the time. Entity, not entity. God damn it. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go back to. Let's pop in our spellcast entity into our update. 
function here self dot spellcast entity okay let's see oh my god spell cast fade is a nil value spellcast fade we should have access to it here local spellcast fade shouldn't be a nil value. We've got it outside. Yeah, we've got it outside of our map, so we should have access to it. And we're not misspelling it. Okay, well, we need an emission rate from our scene. But we, we're not going to be able to use this locally, just like how we weren't able to... Well, that's a different crash. Yeah, it's not a self.spellcast entity, it's a scene view dot current map. No, just dot scene view spellcast entities. So now our particle system is in our map and we're not initializing a map transition with a new spellcast entity count because we added that as a parameter to our map init. So we have to go back to our scene and make sure we do that. So whenever we go to next map, which is right here, we want to pass in whatever current spellcast entity count is. So we're going to be looking for the particles to be scrolling off screen when we initiate a screen transition and we'll see if that works. Yeah, they did. Oh, and then they appeared. Then they appeared because the the current map inherited all the current particles. So I think what we need to do is upon a finished transition, when we finish a transition, we we need to wipe all of our particles all our particle systems but we don't have access to them in our scene we they're only in our map so how would we do that how would we trigger you know how would we trigger something upon a finished transition Now, we do have access to our current map, so what we can do is, you know, right here we're assigning our, whatever our next map to be, putting it into our current map. So I think if we go into our current map, yeah, we go into our current map, we'd have to loop through all our spellcast entities go into our current map but it's not it's not a field god dang it it's, it's a local we don't have access to it because they're they're not a reference to this scene or to the map 
they're just a local variable within that field. So maybe what we can do is make it a reference to the self. So now, anytime we reference our p-systems, it has to be in terms of self, though. that would hopefully give us access to go into this current maps field of their table of particle systems and go ahead and go through all of them and set all of their emission rate to zero or like we want to clear all particles on screen which i think is a different command here let me see love 2d particle system object release we can run object release to destroy the object's lua reference i think that would work we'd go through each particle system and and release it let's try that so we'd go back to our scene and whenever we finish a transition whenever we finish shifting before we assign the next map to our current map, um, we're going to go through our current map. I guess it doesn't really matter what order, but I guess I guess we would go for I gets one through our spellcast entity count. We're going to do something which is we're going to go through our now self dot current map has a field called p systems with an s index i we're gonna go release release each one let me pull up the documentation again real quick uh, get count get image I don't know if we have to do, yeah, we have to do parentheses. Okay, so, oh, we're, we're crashing where? Map 14. Self dot. Yeah, I guess we can't do a local... I don't, I don't know. Oh, we need... Did it work? And we still get like a random particle not where the the flames are, but if we look at the particles, they scroll off with the screen and then they actually came back on upon a finished shifting, which has to do with the fade amount fading to zero once you walk 
Yeah, so we, we shouldn't be updating our entities if we're shifting. Um, as well as our particle system on our current map. Yeah, that as well. That should pause as well. And then it would fade. Okay, so let's let's pause our and our spellcast entities update if we're walking off screen. Spellcast entity count. No, this is different. It's we got to go to our scene. We should have a spell cast entities, yes. And we update their position here. So we would do this. We'd only do this if not. Um, let's see if shifting is up here. Yeah, it is. So we got to go if, if not self.shifting then go ahead and update our spellcast entities x and y position. Now, I don't know if the tween values will throw it off when we shift. Let's see. <laughs> trying to balance it in green while I go off screen and see, but I'm not very good at that. Oh, see, yeah, it does it does screw the tween values. Because our flame is part of our scene. Oh man. And not our map. Yeah. Shit. So it looks like we need to move our spellcast um, entities into Oh, you got the RV? You mean RV. <laughs> That's cool, man. Okay, so yeah, like, there's a couple things we still gotta fix. Like, see how those random pixels way over here, like right here, spawned. We shouldn't have that happen, and it only does it every once in a while. Of course I can't get it to work when I'm looking for it. But we, we should move... That'll be fun, dude. That's cool. Congrats. Okay, well, at least our particle system is going off screen. See, that's jacked. We need to tween our, our uh, spellcast entity X positions just like we're tweening our character location upon a transition. So instead of, instead of just tweening our player value here, we want to tween our um, spellcast entities location. So we're only doing this upon a begin shifting. But we need to shift each and every spellcast entity. Now how this is working is saying, hey, take our player and set our player's X to be equal to... Well, yeah, how is this working? It's like the assignment here is is the tween value. This timer.tween is a knife library function, and I think it it takes in an argument that has a you know values to tween, and we can say, hey, we're gonna shift that self's camera x to become a shift x over the course of 0.9 seconds. And then the camera Y is going to become shift Y over that 0.9 seconds. So what we're doing with our player here is we're shifting our player X to become... Actually, yeah. We're setting our, our literal self.players.x to become a variable player X, which gets assigned based on what shifting we're doing. So we have to go, we have to go tell it, if we're shifting right, we want those flame entities to end up on the left because they're going to go slide to the left along with the player. So we have to we have to have like a spellcast entity X that we're kind of keeping track of upon a shifting so that we can tween it to to stay linked with the the character as we're 
as we're shifting. Because, like, if you look at our player's X position, we're almost all the way to the right. And then we end up all, almost all the way at the left. So we need to tell... We need to tell our game what value these entities need to end up at, depending on which direction we're going. Because we're doing that here with just a variable called player X and player Y, and those are being set to very specific and different things depending on a shift. So I, I maybe maybe we can try this and say maybe we can try this and say um, that our self dot current map because that's what holds our entity our spellcast entity. We're gonna say our current map dot spell cast entities is the table at the index let's just try to move the first one so we're going to say the first spell cast entity that entity's x position is going to become let's just give it the same the same value of our player.x, because that should at least be similar. The offset won't be right, but it should be similar. And then we're going to also give our spellcast entity's y position to become equal to our player y variable, not our actual player y. So that's a little confusing. And then we need a comma here. And maybe spellcast entity one will shift with us. Let's see. So our 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 scene, our current map doesn't have a spellcast entities table. It has a oh, and you know what? It's just in our scene. Our our particle systems are in our map, but our spellcast entities are in our scene. So we should be able to say self dot current spellcast entities no self dot spellcast entities at index one let's try that so let's see we're looking for one yeah see how one flame was able to to, to shift so it was wrong but that proves that we can all we have to do is once we begin a transition we have to assign the appropriate oh gosh and that's really tough it's really tough to assign the correct location that they needed to end up at because it depends on what their starting location is. Because since they're rotating, if they start up... I guess, I guess since they're not being updated when we shift, it isn't that bad. But we do have to do it for every single one of them. Yeah, okay. So we won't finish that tonight, but it is a good thing to work on tomorrow. So now we've got not only our particle systems for each individual flame here, which is really cool. We can up up that to five flames or down to one flame. Um, but the particles remain on the screen as we walk off because we moved our particle systems into our map class instead of our scene class. So let's go to our notes. And we'll go say that we want to find random particle bug, which sometimes the particle system spawns a pixel way, way out from our body, and we want to fix that. I can't replicate it, so it's tough to, tough to test, but... We also want to update clean values for all spellcast entities. Okay. So we'll go ahead and commit that and we'll say uh, spellcast um, this was actually particle system moved into map class. 
Okay. And then we'll call it. We'll call it night tomorrow. We'll probably finish our tween shifting for our spellcast entities so that those are working and we're happy with that. And then it's probably going to be a deep dive into refactoring a lot of local variables. And then we'll go through and do some note taking so that we can jump through our file a little easier. And then after that, since we've got spell casting working, we can either work on... Um, I, I think I want to work on like a two level, like, like we want to build out a couple more sprites so that we can make a little more detailed of a level with map collision detection and everything. And once we have like one scene and the next scene built out and contiguous, uh, with spellcasting working, I can record a little channel trailer for Twitch here, showing off our game and what we're all about here on the channel, and then once we're at that point, I guess we can work on whatever we want. Either we can work on particle systems for bad guys, see how that might look like for corrupted animals. Um, or we could work on the, the loot music portion of the game. Um, we can work on a dialogue system so that we can talk to NPCs. Um, so there's a lot of stuff we can get to. But we're about to have our spellcast entities working pretty well. And then, you know, we'll have to update it to be able to take in an ice type of spell or a water type of spell or whatever we come up with. So that'll be fun. But thanks for being here, guys. Um, I'll be here tomorrow again. And you know what? Yesterday, T Sundown raided us with like, you know, over 30 people. And it was right at the end of my stream, but T Sundown is is streaming right now, so we'll go ahead and raid him, and and I'll thank him for the raid yesterday. But yeah, have a good night, everybody. I appreciate the love, and I'll be here, so I'll catch you guys later.